Anderson is passionate about helping our people get out of the rat race and into entrepreneurship. You've seen him on The Breakfast Club, Forbes, Black Enterprise, CNN, and Fox News, spitting facts on business and entrepreneurship for our people. He's generated over $54 million for his clients last year, and he wants to help you grow your business. Go to thebusinessbully.com. That's T-H-E-B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S-B-U-L-L-Y.com and connect with an amazing group of people that can help you start, grow, and expand your business. You don't have to worry about the recession when you control your income. Head to thebusinessbully.com right now and sign up for his Inner Circle Boot Camp. You'll get top-notch training, access to marketing, and a list-building software, and 24-7 support and more for one low price. And check him out at thebusinessbully.com. Once again, David Anderson, thank you for your support. This is the David Banner Podcast. If you're sick of bullshit TV that's always showing our people in a negative light, if you're looking for information that's simple and entertaining instead of boring, check out Business Bully TV. Business Bully TV has amazing programming from celebrity interviews, documentaries, and movie reviews. You can watch exclusive programming that you can't get anywhere else from today's power players. Business Bully TV is available for free on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and streaming 24-7 and on demand at Business bully.tv Once again, this is David Banner from the David Banner Podcast. David, 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 David Banner. What's happening, y'all? This is David Banner. Welcome to the David Banner Podcast. If you got any type of problem, suck a dick, bitch. Yeah. Feels real good off of this motherfucker. Regina! Regina! Regina look like she about to go to a fucking funeral. <laughs> did, listen, did, did she arrange the murder? Yeah! What happened to Carmen San Diego? I don't know. Where in the world is San, why, why San Francisco? Why can't be somebody nice? Where like the hell is Regina Carmen San Francisco? Carmen San Diego is real nice. Nah, Regina San Francisco, not That's Carmen San Diego. Like Wait, I like it. That is dope. Why That's could actually, be Diana Ross? What about and, Regina? Um, what about Regina San Francisco? That's actually really dope. He said Regina San Francisco. I'll try to clean it up now. AKA Fillmore that's, Super, that's, super that's Slim. Told, that's what I told Scott her. Just, Fillmore Scott, Super just, that's Slim. That's really, what I told her. Fillmore like Rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> Fillmore Rooftop. Don't stop. <laughs> Fillmore Balcony. So I, I, I have to fill y'all in on something. Today, me and Scott came in. We'll get ready to shoot the podcast. And Tommy Nova had mm. someone chauffeuring mm. him <laughs> in his brand new mm. Range Rover that mm. he bought. With the matching outfit. With the matching fucking Sitting in the You know that he only wears blue now? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> Gotta yeah. match that well. Is there something blue? that we need to know about? It's some affi- mm. Damn, Tommy. Oh, damn, Tommy. Oh, damn, Tommy. Damn, Tommy. Da- okay. All right, tell what the fuck you got going on, dog. Okay. You know, he get his range and got really back on his New York shit. A lot yeah. of Yankees hats, yeah. New Balances. Yeah. I ain't seen him wear no Jays. Yeah, yeah. he came down. When he, he first came, he was Jays. Yeah, with us. you know, he was blended he in. on that New Balance. The accent got a little Tommy. thicker, too. Show Yo, what's did. up, son? Yo, what's up, son? Yo, what's up, Dun Dun? Set it, son. Up, son? Where, we Where is born, yeah, son? Kid. Word life. Man, niggas was asking me. Hey. Tim's, nigga, Tim's. Niggas, Tim's, don't, Tim's, nigga. niggas don't really want no smoke. Niggas don't want to see me, B. This guy's every coast. Niggas don't want no fucking smoke. Niggas die every day, B. I'm going to take Tommy Truck and go fuck in the back seat like LL. I will pull up with somebody like it's my range, like wow. L on the video. I'm gonna backseat to your Jeep, your shit. Nothing. I just I'm gonna can't. go smash me so. I'm like, hey Tommy, let me move your truck so I get out the driveway. I will be gone for like good hot splat, thirty. Splat packing. Little thirty minutes. You know. Splat packing. Listen, in his it's his subdivision. All you need about ten minutes. I'll be right back. <laughs> wow. Regina, did you hear what he said? Wow. I'm wondering if all the other ladies heard what he said. And, okay, since Sally, before y'all, before we even started the show, Sally sort of snitched on me a little bit. He not Whoa. snitchy, but he did. And so I I'm know a, we not talking. Huh? I know we not talking about the fumble you made this week on me. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, stop. stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that actually wasn't my fault, but I, 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 I take was. it. I, I take it. That was a... 
Cause we, cause we're not gonna talk about what I had to edit out the show. What? About a certain TV show. Oh. Yeah, that I had to edit out. That you said really loud. I appreciate you. Yeah, I got you. Don't worry about Thanks, it. I, I look. Hey, out. Scott. He made a real time phone oh, on this week. I did. Like did you know, you? you know it was bad because it was funny, and I and I mean for this because he knew he did. And he was texting me, like, "Hey, bro, you cool?" And no, I, I didn't know. I did. Listen, 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 and I didn't respond on purpose. Yeah, just I was, yeah, I was. That's okay. <laughs> now you got to sweat. Do, I had you sweat. He yeah. gave me the next morning, like, "Bro, is everything was straight?" <laughs> but the problem was, you thought you gave me the signal, and you didn't. I did. He you just did didn't not. see. I promise on my brother. I opened up the phone like that. I didn't see it. Yeah, I really didn't. So, all right, so I said that we were going to do something that Oprah do, like, as as the podcast got bigger, and we was going to start giving presents and shit. So me and Scott got together and got presents for all of y'all. And uh, Tommy, give me some cute music. What? Uh, Tommy. And, no, well, Tommy, Vern, you got music too? Oh, Actually, yeah. I, oh, met oh, I, Corey. I, I met Corey. I met Corey. Corey was looking at me like, what the fuck? As hard as I work in this bitch? <laughs> right, the reason why I said Tommy, because Tommy, look what I found. These are really oh, hard to find now. That's, that's spring water and to Tommy. Is, and this is me and Tommy's face. And this is yours by yourself. You don't even have to share it. Man, look how he's zooming in on it. <laughs> look, at him. look how he's smiling. Oh, wow. You like a little rockhead over there. Yeah. <laughs> that's like your for the Tommy. That's just for you. You ain't that's even got to share. You ain't even got to share with Mr. Guzzlemouth over here. Tommy don't even want to drink with me because by the time he drink a half a cup, I be the drunk like three-fourths of the motherfucking bottle. So that's for you. Hey, real quick, though. That's pretty awesome. You know Corey been getting money. He sit with his legs crossed now. Word? <laughs> and, why, and why somebody else engineer? Right. <laughs> you, y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> Range Rover. Range Rover. Range Rover, 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 Rover boy. Word? Yeah. 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 Hey, y'all didn't really see before, before we cut out. He pointed to his mask so he could get some pussy tonight. Because every time he come wow. here, he got to get uh, COVID stuck in the motherfucking <laughs> nose. Or he won't get no pussy or get in the house. <laughs> you got your COVID test over here. You want to go next? Regina, I heard that you lost your entrusted weapon, your ABV uh, staff. So I got you another one. And just raise the sharp. Be careful. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. Thank on. you. Let me see. All right. Corey, I know people, trying to work it, people, people were talking about, like, like your dogs and how uh, you love dogs. And we was thinking like, if anything ever happened to one of your dogs and you had to cook it, <laughs> you could have some <laughs> flavor barbecue sauce, brother. This is a new black business, bro. It's called Sweet Orchard Peach. It's a black owned business. If you ever have to barbecue your dogs, Peach Orchard. And Corey, sauce. in case you don't have to barbecue your dogs, I'm willing to try that. Hey, but there will be no barbecue of the dogs for this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Also, Sully, I decided that uh, you've been putting in a lot of good time. You know what I'm saying? You're meeting all qualifications. You're exceeding expectations. And so we're going to take your blade game up another notch, bro. I got you, I got you a good one this time. Oh, my Ooh. goodness. Oh, wow. Samurai. Shit. Boy, look, that's about 29 times bigger than this. And his name is Sully, like the motherfuckers had them swords right. back in the day. Right. Yeah. Cut a bitch in the face. That's so awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm. I didn't know y'all was giving gifts today. You know what I, I mean? I didn't either. Oh, Sally gave me a gift. Yeah, I did. Where'd it go? I don't know. Oh, I put it in the truck. Oh, mm. yeah. Sally bought me a very nice bag for my new pistol. Okay. Very nice pistol bag. Appreciate you, Sally. Yes, Thanks, sir. Thanks, brother. Yeah, uh, man. Only, only, um... Only motherfucking presents I got is lied on. Lied? No, that's false. I did get you a present this week. Tupac. You sure did. He got me one of the Tupac. Uh, that is uh, ancient. No, man, keep that. That's you. You love that, man. No, Ooh. no, no, no. No. Oh, wow. No, go ahead, man. Thank you. <laughs> I really want it. <laughs> I'm going to give it back to you after the night. Oh, after, that's after yours. The, oh, man, thanks. Wait up. This is new. Yeah, I've never seen that before. It ain't been broken yet. No, that's new. Oh, that's yeah, new. shit. This motherfucker brand new. I cut myself already. Don't See? cut yourself. No, I cut myself all the time when I practice. I, then I might life. have a gift for you, a band-aid. Oh, wow. Just joking, <laughs> I don't. Okay, so, Sally, we said we're going to talk some more about sports before we move uh, Before we move the show on. What's, what's going on in the sports world? Oh, Cam balling, and I'm glad, because y'all was all on his dick not signing him like he wasn't that dude. Right. And, 
Cam, you back ball. You look good in the first two games. Him and Russell went at it on Sunday night. Yeah. That was a real good game. That was awkward because me and Sali was watching the game. And like we trying to go for the the black quarterback, but, you, it, was, yeah. but it was too old. <laughs> Man, you'd be kind of stuck. It was like I just they both balled though, yeah. so I, that was I didn't think dope. I was gonna see that. That's really dope. Yeah, what two black quarterbacks? Yeah. I mean, the last two MVPs been black quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Jr. Smith. Oh wore, yeah, wore his ABV stuff to the uh, pregame. To the pregame, yes sir. Our sales went all the fucking way up. And it show you, All man. The way up. It show you how God worked, man. Like our office was flooded. Like our whole office got flooded. What a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. And then right after that, like you know, what I'm saying we kept it moving. You know, moved it out the day that it, it was the day two days after it happened. We kept it moving. Our sales went up, and we didn't stop. You know, it was really expensive. You know, what I'm saying we had to move four times. We, you know, the thing about our people, they don't give a fuck what you're going through. That's actually what I'm gonna talk about today. Motherfuckers don't give a fuck about good or bad. Let me say something, though, um, about your fans and the people who support you. Mm-hmm. Like, we got emails, and they were saying, we support you. I'm buying something. Um, I just bought a book. Send, you can send me one that's wet and send someone else a good one. I'm like, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> send me that. That's so sweet. Send me the mildew. Uh, uh, send me the mildew. <laughs> hey, y'all, y'all can send me the wet, the wet ones. Oh, God. Nasty ass. Wrong what? term. What kind of wet? Wrong time. Huh? What kind of wet? Mildew. That, send him that. That's exactly what you said. No, nah, I don't want it mildew. You already that. said it. He said it was mildew. You was like, send it to me. That mac, that mac and cheese. Yeah. That, that good a- dish. That apple pie. Avocado. That good dish. <laughs> send me that finger food. It's mold in the office. Hey, listen. Hey, I need that finger. I like finger food. What you know about avocado, Regina? It was just green in it, mold. You know, reference to molds, not reference oh, to what Lee's boo. saying. I mean, kind of, sort of, but not really. You know, don't rain on my parade. Fucking boo. Uh, 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 what about that last second shot, Sally? Oh, you talking about uh, AD? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, that was live, too. That was that same night, Yeah, I too. know. We were back and we're forth from the games. We were back and forth. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, they got right. They locked, They took that L last night, though. I didn't see that. Yeah, they took that L. They, uh, they cut him down to, like, four with, like, three minutes left, and then fucking... Murray launched two deep ass threes, and it was pretty much a wrap after that. Wow. Okay. What'd what you think you? about Deion Sanders to Jackson State? Yeah, oh, I like I like that play. That. I like that play. Yeah, that's real good. I'm hoping more schools replicate that model, Fred man. Yeah. Bring a lot of dough into the school, right improve the facilities. Next thing you know, they're really competing. Yeah, because like he know what everything's supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? From being who he is and playing where he played, like he know what the what those other ones got to offer, so he can dead on tell them like what they need to compete. And 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 he knows the marketing aspect, right? Like that—that's that balance between the talent, you know, and then the. Because a lot of times, with people real shiny and talk a whole lot of shit, they don't have the talent, mm-hmm. you know. Most, especially in the music industry, the motherfuckers that you know t- brag the most and talk the most shit usually have the least amount of talent. And same same thing. Look, <laughs> that happened last week. Yeah. Um. But um. You didn't get that on tape, did you? Tommy, okay. Um, um, but I think Dion can market, bring other people, people there, um, other players there, um, you know, other faculty there, and he could talk that shit to mm-hmm. bring, you know, to bring some sign, because the truth is we need that. Right. You know, that was one of the things I always wanted for Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Their basketball team is like, this is a, this is a shiny city. You know what I'm saying? This is people. People want to have fun. People want to go out. People want to have fun. I think the the fucking team should represent that. Like we need. Well, they, we need they, some show time. They mortgaged their future when they made that bad choice. Which one? When they should have took Luca. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about. They gonna that. live with that one. That yeah. boy gonna get some MVPs. Yeah, they gonna live talked, with that one. We talked about that. Yeah. That's like, gonna be one they chew on for a while. Yeah. I I I I, I want I wanted that too, man. And um, thank the Hawks for sending us some real dope gear that nobody else. On this planet has unless they know somebody inside the house. Look at Sali, he got the fresh game. Stay on. Stay crisp. Wow. Um, With the Hawks shirt on. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even really. Yeah, nice. Scott. Yeah. You got something? Oh, you talking about because I said what I said? Huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, I like Trey, but you know, they should have got Luca. It's just it is what it is. Mm. She said something. 
You never said though. I huh? didn't. I just asked Scott if he had some Hawks gear. Hey, I didn't get anything. Call it Regina huh? I, got, I got nothing. Me either. I'm just hey, checking. Thomas. I guess it went every other person. Every other skip the seat. Skip the seat. <laughs> Regina over there looking like funeral wrong fab. Seat. Went the wrong seat. Boy, you almost made me. I, I love. Her. I love her though. I almost said it though. We're gonna call you a monkey nigga again. Monkey, black <laughs> monkey, nigga, black oh, monkey, nigga. You black monkey, nigga. All right, Regina, you've been trained to say negative things. I'm just gonna take it. Like so, this, Regina, so, like, you, you want to you want to introduce our guest? Our guest today? to the podcast. Yeah. Well, I want to say that um, he has been the highest contributor to um, our bottom line as it pertains to advertisement. And I, I want to thank him. Um, he called up and asked if he could be on the show. I was like, well, shit, even if I didn't love you as much as I do, uh, motherfucker, you done paid your way on this bitch. You can come on this motherfucker and lay down <laughs> on the motherfucking table and just put our, our fucking elbow on you and talk over you, bro. You can just lay in this motherfucker if you want to. Go ahead, Jane. Yes, our guest today is Dave Anderson with Business Bully. He is, like he said, a great contributor of ours. Um, I met Dave, you've known him for a while, about a year ago, and he has been consistently um, advertising. He does very well uh, in his business. What I love about Dave is that not only did you go do his event, he's done ours, and he is a big supporter, not just in advertising, but he puts his money where his mouth is. So I would like to bring Dave on, Dave Anderson. What's hey, happening, G? Yeah. Yeah. Talk about you. So, bro, we, let, let's, let's take care of the business first, bro, because, yes, because uh, we're going to actually allow you to stay and be a part of our conversation because of our friendship, bro. But tell the world who you are if they're blind to the fact what you've done historically, what you've been a part of, and what you're doing now with your business. Wow. Um, yeah, so going way, way back, started my career in 1987, making me the youngest contracted broadcaster in, in radio history. Um, at the time, I think a five-year-old came along when I was like 15, but whatever. Um, you did, did like with seven, a five-year-old, he did, did he did. You were just like, fuck the five-year-old. I was nine. I, 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 that's why they call you Dave. business bully. Fuck, Dave, you threw shade. Hey man, put like baby, put, put like like baby signs and just smack Dave. that motherfucker. Like, you threw shade. <laughs> all right, go ahead, dog. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Listen, so you know, I, I I did all of that good stuff. Um, did uh did TV for a little bit. Did uh CBS Saturday Morning had a show called uh, Candy Kids Club. Did all that kind of good stuff. Um, graduated high school, started a radio station at the campus of Temple University because I was not allowed to go to Howard. Because it was like nine to one, and my family was like, no, nah, you love chicks too much. Um, so I started a radio station there, Whip Radio. It's still there 20 years later. Um, left all that good stuff, started working with um, Wendy Williams in Philadelphia when she left New York. Um, moved out of that situation up and down the dial, Fayetteville, Rocky Mount, um, Florida, Atlanta, Miami, like all over the place. Um, put Clues, uh, DJ Clues weekend show in syndication. Uh, put Ricky Smiley on in 35 markets, um, created what you now know as Ricky Smiley for real, which is the number rated number one rated show on TV one. Um, worked with Dion on uh, Primetime Love, you know, so like I did a lot of good stuff, but I was making millions for other people. Mm -hmm. And once, once somebody sat me down and was like, yo, do you know how much money your show, your night show generates? You know, because that's how I met Banner. I met Banner in, uh, in Nashville, like 03. You know, and the guy, the sales manager was like, yo, you know how much your, your show was generating? I said, how much? He was like, yeah, we do about $35,000 a night. I was like, son of a bitch. And you make it about, you make it about $15, $30, $45 yeah. a night. That's some bullshit. Yeah, I was like, this is some yeah. bullshit, you know? And, and what I realized is it's our fault if we continue to work for people when we're the engine. You know, they treat us like the battery, but we're really the engine, you know? So I said, I'm going to continue to do what I got to do, but one of these days I'm out. And after I saw other people, you know, come up off two, 300,000 off of a tip, I was like, okay, cool. No, nah, I'm good. I renamed an entire company whose name I won't say, but you know it if you see it. And they have been rocking with that shit ever since. Told them about doing an award show. They told me I was crazy. I was like, yeah, they said Dick Clark was crazy. American Music Awards is still here. Dick Clark dead. You know, so they ran with it. And I'm like, y'all are making all this money. He just breezed by the fact that he was like, bro, Dick Clark dead. But yeah, this shit's still going. 
You know what I mean? Like, hold, on, hold, on, hold on one second. Let me pause for a second. While we're saying that, fuck. Fuck. With his, and his motherfucking mustache. And fuck. Let, again, guys, but let off Breonna Taylor's killers. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. That, was off, that was off the <laughs> dome, by the way. You didn't even know what to say. That was off the dome, by the way. We didn't practice don't that, Tommy Nova. Don't just say that, cup. Cup. Maybe, yeah. I could, <laughs> maybe I could drive Tommy Nova around. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. All right, you know, my main thing is, you know, accomplishments are dope and all that shit, but the thing of it is, I had to leave everything behind. When David Banner met me, he met me as Taz Dad. I didn't use my government name because my uncle was in the business and he wouldn't help me. So everything that I built inside the business, I built on my own, and then I had to leave all of that behind and then figure out how to make money for me and my family, and that's what I started to do. I started to put all of those radio skills, all those production skills, um, all of those sales skills to work for myself. And I started building and acquiring businesses and, you know, working with other black families and just, you know, we're out here killing it right now. So I got a coaching business and a few other things and, you know, put out 18 number one books. My latest one is called Sell It Like Jesus. <laughs> Principles and Strategies of the World's Weirdest Salesman. I like it. Praise the Lord. Really nice. I got all three Jesuses on here. I got, I got, I got Milk Coach Jesus. I got Jesus, and I got, I got Ned DeWino. You know what I mean? So you can pick your Jesus. I got oh, all of them. Oh man! You know what I'm saying? Oh, so like, I, I've been extremely blessed, and my clients did 54 million last year. We're on our way to 100. So you know, I'm happy to be here. I feel like that was a real long goddamn intro for like 33 years worth of work. Hey, bro, I've been seeing it, and this really makes me feel good, bro. I, I see that um, you and Derek Grace are really connecting, and you both mean a lot to me, bro. How did that come about? Well, you know, I think, you know, Derek, I had talked to Derek, um, I think when I was doing BullyCon, like last year, year before, and I was talking to him, we just started vibing and started talking about, you know, what we wanted for our lives and things of that nature. And he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll come up to Philly. You know, it's like, oh, Banner doing it, that's big bro, blah, 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 blah. So we just started hitting it off, man, and just going for it. And he said, listen, I want you to come teach, you know, at my post-Trump course. I'm like, bet, I'm always down to run my mouth. And I was mm-hmm. going in there and folks' throats out because the thing of it is, and you know this, Banner, like, when you black, you know, like, you're so worried about um, black people being upset at you and, and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, yo, white people are a thousand times harder on you and they got your foot on the neck since birth. That's you know part what of what we're going to talk about today. Say, save all that. We, we got a lot. We're we going to talk about oh. that. <clears throat> so me, me, me and Derek have been, you know, doing a lot of business together and, you know, our families are going to be doing business for generations, but we're about to launch a podcast called The Kings of Commerce mm-hmm. and uh, we're about to tour. So like, it, it's about to be a superhero team up like you ain't seen, homie. Yeah. But what a cool thing about it is, <clears throat> what I'm starting to realize, bro, is that um, I looked, I turned around and I looked. I was like, yo, man, uh, me and Charlemagne are cool. <clears throat> um, me and Talib Kweli are cool. Me and Tip, we're cool. Me and Killer Mike are cool. Me and Noriega are cool. You know, me and Snoop are cool. Like, just amongst <clears throat> those people, Bro, that's over 20 million listeners and eyeballs, bro. Like, think about it. We're getting in a position now, but we don't really need anybody else. If, if, <clears throat> I have the saying that if, if I had you, I wouldn't need them. We're getting in a position where we actually never, ever needed anybody. But like me and Regina and Sali were talking about this, about how like, with even with this podcast, bro, we're buying, we bought everything that we need. We got every mic that we need. You know, we got the computers that we need. Um, I'm working on a situation right now where we're about to buy the first camera where we can shoot a full length, full length feature film. Then after this movie, the next movie I shoot, we're going to buy another camera. And after four movies, we'll have all the cameras that we need <clears throat> in order to do what we need to do. Because what I'm realizing, bro, is if you really think about it, it's not logical to think that a snake won't bite you. That's it. So historically, if white people, I, I, I look at white people and, and people actually think it's a feeling. No, it's not a feeling. It's empirical data that everywhere they, that they go, they suck the culture and the literal life out of people. So to think that these people are going to give you justice, to think if the, that these people are going to represent your people in the right way, 
or give you freedom is flawed. You know, so it is up to us to take care of us. But what me and Scott Parker were talking about today is that our people have absorbed their moral fiber and um, the way that, that they look at morals and they don't have morals. A, a white lawyer told me about five years ago, he said, David Banner, you know, we're sorry that this happened to you, but it, it's common practice. And I told that motherfucker slavery was a common practice too at one time, but that don't fucking make it right. Boom. You know, so, so today's um, topic is actually about good and bad, right and wrong. Because I'm slowly starting to believe that in America, um, what's good, what's right doesn't really matter, you know? And uh, we're going to get into that. But what, what, what I, what I want to ask you from a business perspective, if there's something that you could pass along to uh, 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 a 15-year-old child who's uh, about to embark into the real world as, as it pertains, because 15 is when I started, like, actually, shit, Scott, we started at, yeah, I started at, what, 11, 12, uh, mowing grass. Yep. I've been 12. making my own money since, like, 11, 12, yeah, I was bro. washing cars before that. Yeah. And before that, I had a little store in the crib. I was yeah. buying. We don't want to know it. Hold on. We don't want to know what you were selling. <laughs> no, I was selling no, stale. No, I'm talking about him. Oh, we know what he was selling. <laughs> no, no. I, I had a job at the pool, too. What, you? You can swim? Nah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> He a hustler. He a hustler. I had a job at the pool. For Doing real. what? Doing what? I worked at the pool. I was the locker, diving in. No, I was the locker boy. What was you diving? You ain't no boy. I was. That's what. They, that's but they don't call, call yourself. Well, I was. Fucking, I was. Well, I was a kid still. So yeah, I was. He was locker. But what we was doing? I never see hear what you were doing. Oh, here we go. Nothing. So check it. Here we go. I knew the dude at the front and who worked the front who get the. That's old. That's it's statute of limitations gone. All right, yeah, go <laughs> Look, so About he to would catch a juvenile charge at thirty three. No, it ain't the, the Law and Order music. <laughs> but listen though, all he, all, all it was he would take the ticket right, and I would have to get the ticket to know that the people paid. So he basically would stop giving them tickets, and I would just let them in anyway. And so they only could count the money off how many tickets was ripped off the road. So it'd be like, you know, 200 people that slid through there, but we only didn't account it for about 75 of them. And then that whole other 125, we pocketed that money and would split that every day after we got off. So as a kid, that was some good little extra cheese to go on top of my real check anyway. So you get a little hot little extra 50 to 75 a day. And what you did with that? Oh, that's what that's Jay's. Jay's. <laughs> what do you mean? And too short, and too short new album. Look, CDs and Jays. That was all it was about at that age. Yeah. I, well, you talking like fourteen years old? We doing that, yeah. Bro, I I I, I want to tell you, <coughs> Sali, um, bro, he's revolutionary revolutionized the um our company, man. Like all of the apparel, even the apparel that that you have on, like he designs um shoes, the whole nine, bro. So like. The thing is, man, is that I've realized with all of us, with Scott, with, with, with Corey, don't even know I got plans for him, Tommy Nova. Like, I, I really think that the Most High put us all around each other. And there have been so many times, bro, where you have asked to help our business. And um, I, I, I turned the uh, opportunity down only because... Um, I was waiting for the right time, but what I'm realizing, it ain't no right time. We got to make the right time, bro. And um, uh, if you, y'all you even look in the background of his house, uh, he say he don't cap, but he does. Like, everything that I've ever done from day one, him and Derek Grace are some of the first people um, to buy it. I, I, the shoes, the God box, the, the T-shirts, bro. You know, um, tell them about our, our relationship. I wasn't even going to talk about this at first, man, but like, you know, just 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 how we we got to this point. <laughs> All right. Before I do that, I want to answer your first question: Was what would I say to a fifteen year old who start? Because that's extremely important. What you got to understand is society is designed to make you a worker. So ignore society. That includes school. Other than adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, reading, and writing, everything else is bullshit. Ignore it. Just do with what the information you want to do with. That's one. Two. Um, your parents only know up until they became an adult. 
You know what I'm saying? So like with my mom, you know, being born in the 40s, she only know a little bit about a little bit. She don't know nothing about entrepreneurship on this level. So for her, her whole thing was when I retired, she was like, no. Nah. So you got to understand that your parents are only designed to do what they do, you know, and you have to take it the next the next step. In other words, an iPhone one don't look like an iPhone 11 Max Pro. You see what I'm saying? It is the same company, same phone, but they can't handle the data. You're built for your time. So it's okay to take risks. The younger you are, the more risks you should take. So that's first. Um, when it comes to our relationship, bro, like I can't even put it into words. You know, like David Banner walked into my studio and they're like, yo, David Banner's coming. I'm like, all right, bet. Okay, here comes another rapper. Great. You know, so Banner comes in and I love the music. Like it wasn't even no thing. Like I love the music. But my whole thing was, okay, I'm going to do another interview. Homeboy going to go on about his business. And then, you know, Bone Crush will be here tomorrow. And it will be here on Friday. And Dave came in and he started, like, stapling his own posters up. And I was like, yo, David Banner, like, you staple your own posters? He was like, if I can't staple my own posters, I shouldn't have them. Right. You know, and the amount of... Knowledge this man poured into me whenever I needed something, he was there, you know, and we've always built like that. Even when, you know, he was moving around and doing his thing, and I was moving around doing my thing, we never lost touch. And, you know, being in frustrated moments, you know, it's hard when you're trying to navigate this, you know, this life. And Banner was always that type of person, you know what I'm saying? When I got up to like 600 pounds, I was like, yo. I can't do this, that, and a third. Like, how are you dropping weight? He was like, yo, just start walking. So I started walking. So, like, my relationship with you, bro, is like, to me, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I treasure, you know, and I, I, I never miss an opportunity to tell you I love you and I appreciate you. And I never miss an opportunity, you know, now that I'm in a position to, to write a check. Because... And you wrote a whole bunch of them motherfuckers, too. I appreciate it. 